What is up gamers? Welcome back to another video. Today is something different, something we don't normally do. As you saw from the title, the question is, was 1.20 a bad update? We're going to further discuss the pros and the cons of 1.20 and our issues with it and things that we want addressed and the positives. So as some of you know, the update came out June 7th, 2023. It's titled the Trails and Tales update. Uh, it's been a few months now. It's so it's been a little while, it gave us all enough time to experience all the features it has to offer and all of its glory and or issues. But I want to start out with the cons of this update. So some of my issues, I felt like 1.20 was missing that, like that wow factor. It didn't have really a main focus that really interested the community as a whole or myself really, or something that really headlined the update. It was a update combined of a bunch of different little things some quality of life changes which was all good and all but i felt like it was missing that wow factor as like 1.19 had the warden and the deep dark and all that fun stuff that's like the wow factor of the update that's why everyone's like holy crap it's like what is this this is insanely new and this update didn't really feel like it had that now the next thing would be as a builder i didn't feel like there was enough good blocks added to kind of like help with creativity i guess i mean we have the cherry wood wood set which looks great and all and the stripped cherry wood logs are amazing and the bamboo mosaic and all the bamboo alternatives look good as well but besides that there wasn't really anything else i guess i mean not very many blocks were really added it was more so changes and a few other things here and there so i i wish there was a little bit more blocks i guess a little bit more of a variety of blocks added another con i believe is prims are a really really missed opportunity i'm hoping for a rework in the future i think that they have the potential to be amazing i mean they look really really good but they are way too grindy as like you get them all one time and you realize the hard work that you got to do and how annoying it is to find them all you don't want to do that in every world it's just a pain it's time consuming and some people don't have a lot of time I myself did it with Bales on the Eternals, so I know the pain of finding all of them. I know how long it takes. It took us like 20 hours to find all 16 of them. So that, I mean, I understand it's supposed to be rare and difficult to find, but at some point it's a too far. And they all they did really was use old generated structures and just kind of placed the templates inside a chest in the area or the trail runes you use the suspicious sand and the brush and got them out that way so i think there was kind of a, a lack of excitement doing it because once you go to one bastion or once you go to one fortress you feel like you've been to them all so it's just kind of really repetitive just to hope to find something in a chest so i hope one day it gets reworked and it's not stuck in this weird phase of just going to the same areas maybe something will happen if not i mean the first time is exciting finding them all, but after that you don't want to do it on any other world. Trust me. And I firmly believe they missed a gigantic opportunity to trim elytras and your tools. If you watch our Eternals, you see we have a mod to where we can trim our elytras and they look so good. It fits the armor so well and it just looks amazing. So hopefully in the future they add this kind of thing because I think that takes the armor trims to the next level and it would make at least worth going out there because let's be real how often are you going to retrim your netherite armor if not to just be like hey look at me i have multiple sets with multiple trims kind of pointless but if you had tools and armor you could and elytra you could kind of i don't know i feel like it would give it more use so hopefully we see that in the future now another con the camel although it looks amazing and they did a great job with the animation it doesn't really have purpose. Yes, you can throw a saddle on him. Whoops. Throw a saddle on him and you can ride him around. But he's not all that fast. And all he does is dash. So I don't feel like there's too much of a difference between a camel and a horse besides the size and being able to ride two people. So it's good for servers and messing around. But once you go into solo, it's these are harder to find than a horse. They're slower than a horse. And all they do is jump and dash a gap. That's the only kind of unique purpose of it. Um, you don't get anything really from killing them. There's no like effective benefit to having them. Just another animal to have that you can ride, I guess. Another thing that I don't necessarily care for is the sniffer. I had high hopes for this thing. It's really, really interesting to find this. 
that was the best part of this experience is the excitement of finding your first sniffer egg but these guys are also super unique i'm glad they're putting in new mobs and not like more animals that are in real life they come up with their own things but the sniffer just it, to me is a letdown Maybe in the future they add more seeds, but it only get, brings up the torch flower seed or the pitcher plant, and it only digs up one every eight minutes. That is a very long time to wait, especially if you need a lot of the seeds, because this guy likes to take his time. The only time it really is beneficial is if you have 20 to 30 of these in a little farm, and they're just constantly pulling seeds up, and you're constantly collecting them. That's the only time you can really get a lot of those seeds, because that leads me into the next issue is actually the torch flower and the pitcher pot. Pitcher plant. The torch flower I really like. I think it looks nice. I think this is a little too weird. It looks almost alien to me. The texture and everything that they put into it. I mean, it's unique. I guess it can it can be useful in some like lab builds or science builds. But the biggest issue is you cannot bone meal them to get seeds. You cannot get seeds from them by breaking them. All you do is get the flower itself. So the only way to get multiple is to wait for him to dig them up and like i said every eight minutes it is a pain trust me i've got a sniffer in eternals and i it's been two months and i have like seven flowers because half the time you don't realize they dig them up and you miss them so unless you have an automatic farm underneath them with like a minecart and they're on mud because a minecart can pick up blocks through mud and they will dig through mud it's not really useful so the sniffer is cool but i kind of wish there was more seeds so hopefully in the future we get more. The next thing that I think is a huge disappointment are the trail ruins. These are some of the most underwhelming structures you could find in the game. Maybe, maybe your first one is exciting. And then after that, excavating the entire thing and going through all the rooms is extremely underwhelming. The loot is not very good. The only thing you could find is four or five different trims which is cool but once you get those there's no point of coming back to these it's not anything you can find good stuff it's like random loose stuff or the relic disc the relic disc is the other thing that's cool but other than that they're not something that you're going to come back to they feel very empty and they, they're just missing missing something i'm not sure what maybe there should be like an extra room down there or some kind of area to go and explore more instead of just digging an entire area out and kind of finding nothing it's like they become extremely obsolete in the end and also suspicious gravel and suspicious sand are so annoying to spot if you don't already know the difference if you're someone the first time you see this you walk in you don't even notice and you end up breaking it and you break two it happens so often or they'll be like pushed up in the wall and you'll break bottom gravel and it falls and it breaks there should be an easier way to see the difference between the two without having to use the vanilla tweaks uh, data pack that shows like little lines around it to kind of like box it in so you can tell. Now that we've kind of talked about all the negative stuff for this update, I want to switch it over to the positives because there are a lot of positives. The first pro of this update is actually the look of the armor trims. These are two of my favorite combinations right here. This is the Vex trim on diamond armor with amethyst. And this is the silence trim on netherite with diamond. They both look incredible. All the art styles for the trims actually look incredible. So with that in mind, the armor trims do look extremely good. I just, like I said before, I think they missed out on a few opportunities, but the designs they picked for most of them, not all, some are kind of weird, but most of them look incredibly good. You can have thousands and thousands of different combinations to make them look even better. But these are two of my favorite right here. The second pro of this update is this biome. The cherry grove biome is extremely cool. It's super beautiful. Like the little flowers on the ground, the particle effects you get from walking under the leaves, which you can actually place anywhere and you'll still get the particle leaves. Like I, I could just place it like way over here and you'll still get the particle leaves to come off from it, which is super cool to add. Oh, Hi. Wait, does he want this? Oh, apparently bees are attracted to this. I did not know that. But you can place them inside of an interior and get the same flowering effect, which could add a lot of interesting feel to your builds. It's similar to the spore blossom, but in my mind, I feel like this one does more of an area effect, and it's a little different. It's like a pink particle. 
but both of them are still great. I wonder what they look like being used together. The next thing, obviously, would be these bad boys. The chiseled bookshelf. Mine look 3D right now because I got a data pack from Vanilla Tweaks, which makes it look 3D and it's super cool, super immersive. That's kind of what the regular bookshelf is doing too. But the other great thing about the chiseled bookshelves is it acts as storage and you can pull them out and put them in in whatever order you feel. And it adds a nice little sound too when you put it, the enchanted one in. Can't really hear it, but adds nice little sounds. It's cool, cool decoration of like random books. Looks like some are missing. But these also put a redstone signal out depending on how many books are in it. And then depending on which one you take out is the signal it will put out first. So if I take out the fourth book, it'll put out a signal strength of four and vice versa. I believe I'm not a redstone guy, so don't quote me on that. Go watch another video. I'm not, I can't explain that because I don't know it. So there are cool ways to make secret entrances or uh, yeah, I don't know, other redstone stuff. Like I said, I'm sure you could YouTube and find chisel bookshelf redstone things because I don't know. Another great quality of life change is being able to do this. You just right click the sign and you can change anything you want. You can delete it, change it all for free with no hassle at all without having to break the sign and replace it, which is super annoying. Nobody liked to do that. It was a pain. We rather would just leave the signs or get rid of them entirely than constantly retype them, especially if you have an idea board and you have ideas all over the place. Now you can just simply right click and erase. But another thing you can do is you can take honeycomb and you can lock your sign so you can no longer edit it. And it's a cool way to stop people from grieving and changing your sign a bunch. So those of you on Eternals, strong, whose sign who constantly is getting changed, just put a honeycomb on it and be done with it. Simple. Just do it. Another great addition is the hanging. Hanging signs are another win. They look amazing. They help add to your environment into the storytelling on how you want to have light posts. You can have directions. These can face in all different directions. So if I place it here, it'll angle that way. If I come over here and place it here, it angles that way. You could also put them off the side of a block, which I think I can just do it here. Yeah, just like that. It's just adding a new variety than just having a sign placed on a wall or on a ground, all ugly like, like this. Now you can have it hanging off the side of a building or hanging from a post and it just, another quality of life that really looks cool. And you can walk on these. So you can make a little parkour with these. You can't walk on those, but like the hanging ones you can walk on. I'm pretty sure you can connect them. Yes, you can. So it could add as a nice little support to a bridge even, a small little bridge and I'm so good at building, right? Look at that. Look how great that looks. <laughs> Another thing that I think could potentially be a win is this weird calibrated skulk sensor. Now, this one is still pretty up in the air for a lot of the community. People thought this was going to change redstone for the better and the, unlock a lot of potential and change to the redstone and how it operates. However, as of right now, I think the community is starting to see this as a missed opportunity. They thought it was going to revolutionize farms, and I think it still could in the future. Maybe they make a couple changes, but you can kind of program these to pick up the sound of certain things or something like that. I'm not a big redstone guy, so I don't know entirely. I got a little lesson from Bales on Eternals, but even he was confused me. I don't think he really knew. But, I mean, I think maybe in future updates when they change some stuff, this block becomes a lot more valuable because I don't see very many farms utilizing this yet, but I'm still going to put it in the pros because it's something different. It's like a Wi-Fi signal, basically, for some redstone. Another win, I think, are these pot I'm breaking these. These pots. So you can place any of these sherds together to craft a pot and you just throw them in four corners, or sorry, in a little plus sign, and you get yourself a decorated pot which has the sides of all the sherds you put on it. And I think it rotates with how you place it. Yep, so the front one will always be uh, the way you're facing. So this is a cool little way to kind of fill up space in your build and add a little bit more decoration in a sense. And another thing that's really cool 
is you can place some things inside of them and it looks like it fits perfect. The textures work very well. You can even put iron bars in there. The creativity on these are kind of endless. One that I have kind of thought about is, I don't know, some kind of hose faucet and it looks like it is filling this jar up with water. It kind of adds a little bit more feel to the area. Obviously not just nether brick fences, but some contraption that looks like water is coming up and pouring it into the jar. You can put glass panes in it and basically anything small torches lanterns panes iron and flowers i think i think you can put a flower pot yep flower pot so then you can put flowers in it, it looks like a huge flower pot and i touched on it a little bit earlier but the bamboo wood set and the cherry wood set look really good i like the doors on both of them although i think i like the bamboo door a little bit more i like that window it's got right there and this one has like kind of the screen on it i guess but overall, they both look really good. I like this stripped wood a lot. I think it's gonna be coming in handy a ton for detailing roofs and stuff. But the cherry wood also looks incredibly good. And the bamboo, you have two different sets. You have the bamboo planks and the mosaic planks, as well as the block of bamboo and the stripped bamboo. And the next cool thing they added is the ability to place mob heads on a note block and being able to hear their sounds. It is a super cool way to prank your friends, if you're playing in a server or playing with your friends, to be able to put one of these in their house and hide it and freak them out with the creeper sound or a zombie sound or anything that would spook them, as well as adding some sort of ambiance in your builds themselves cool feature i think we've been wanting something like this for a while now if we could just get more mob heads and put it into the game instead of having to use the data pack for vanilla tweaks but overall it's i mean it's cool i mean being able to just freak someone out with this is perfect and the last but not least is the relic music disc this is just added with 1.20 because of the trails and tails. It's by Aaron Sharoff. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I probably messed it up, but it is so soothing. It has a great beat to it. And it, like, let's listen to that. Overall, I think it's one of my bet my favorite discs in the game. I really enjoy it. There's a crazy beat drop. I'm not going to wait for it. So you guys will have to go find that in your world if you want to experience it. The Relic Music Disc is definitely on the pros list for this. The last music disc that they added for the Deep Dark, I don't remember what it's called. That one was very spooky and I was not a fan. But this one's cool sounding. We actually just jammed to it on Eternals with Guy and Tronk. And it we just kind of vibed out with it. Now that leads to the question being, was 1.20 a letdown or a bad update? Well, I think Mojang took the safe route with this update. I believe it's because of the issues with the previous updates on them not delivering and promising fireflies, please rethink your decision on those and bring them into the game and fix the birch forest, I beg you. But with them doing that and having all the, the issues with the community on not delivering on promises and concept art. I think they really kept this update quiet and just kind of simple. They made a lot of quality of life changes and improvements without being too ambitious, which isn't always a bad thing. I think a majority of the things they added were good additions. They just need to be reworked a little bit. So in the future, I'd like to see them be a little bit more ambitious and add more of a crazy change to the game rather than simple additions here and there. However, I do not believe that 1.20 was a bad update. I'm a firm believer that we are extremely lucky to be continuously getting content from a game that is over 10 years old. Let that sink in. Some games die off very quickly. This game's been around for 10 plus years and we still get updates every year. We're extremely blessed, extremely lucky to be spoiled by Mo Yang and them still be putting out content. And they're still releasing content. They said they have stuff for another 50 updates, which is probably 50 years. It's crazy. And I think it should be viewed, anything they add these days should be viewed as a blessing. And no matter what it is, we're getting something new. We're getting a change to the game. And it's refreshing. It brings a lot of people back, no matter what the update is. Everyone wants to experience it. So in the end, I would have to say Minecraft 1.20 Trails and Tales was a good update. It was not great. I don't put it in the top tier of Minecraft updates, 
but it was good. It was a safe addition and they added a lot of cool quality of life changes to an already amazing game. I don't think it was bad. I think that there's a lot of good additions to it. Just some things that need, that need addressing or reworked. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.